Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper and this video is about retreat automation. I just spent the weekend at the retreat location where I spent some time working on my systems. I got home this evening I thought I'd give you a demonstration of some of the devices I use to protect my investment out there to provide additional security, uh, deterrent for theft or people breaking in, and to monitor some of my systems out there when I can't be on site to make sure everything's functioning properly. So the first thing I'll pull up here, of course I'm using Internet Explorer for the FOSCAM. FOSCAM are those little dome cameras, they're wireless cameras that you can connect to an Internet Wi-Fi access point and remotely access those. And I use this for a security device inside the retreat location. And we'll go ahead and hit that favorite there and pull the camera up out there. Now my Internet connection isn't the fastest out there, so this may take a few minutes to get going. So we'll go ahead and log in here. And we'll click on mobile phone because I don't have ActiveX installed. So here's my FOSS camera. I have this inside the living room at the retreat location. It's pointed at the front door and on the right hand side are the doors to the individual bedrooms and the bathrooms. So if somebody were to break in, this camera has motion sensor capability. So when it sees motion in the frame, it'll start taking snapshot pictures and emailing them to me. This provides me a level of security and allows me to keep an eye on the inside of the place when I can't be there on the weekend. The FOSS camera also allows you to pan and tilt this version that I have out there. So you have this paddle wheel down here so you can actually move the camera around but I got it all set up in a good spot to watch what I want to watch. Another set of cameras I have out there is an older DVR system. So these are my outside cameras. We'll pull that up and go ahead and log into that system. And we'll click on the link there. Now this is an 8 channel system. A couple of my cameras broke and I haven't gotten around to replacing them yet. But the two primary cameras I have are on the side of the retreat looking at my storage building. And then my storage building or shed looking back at the retreat location. So we'll pull up camera one. And this is a camera looking at my shed where I have my tools and stuff. And in that shed I have a computer running full time and we'll cover that in a moment. And then the camera on the shed is actually looking back at the retreat location, but it looks a little foggy up there tonight. And you can see over here this little square, that's the window on the side of the retreat. And this light here is actually the infrared LED bulbs inside the security camera looking at the shed. So this is an older DVR system. I don't put expensive stuff out there because if something does happen, I don't want to lose a lot of money, and I've been hobbling this system along for quite some time. It's pretty old, but as long as it keeps working, I'm going to keep using it. So for security, I have a little low-cost FOSS camera out there, and then I also have the outside cameras. Some of these devices work better with Internet Explorer, and others work better with Chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and close Internet Explorer, and I'm going to bring up Chrome, and now I'll show you my off-grid solar power system charge controller made by Morningstar. And I really like this charge controller because you have a lot of money invested in batteries if you do off-grid solar power and you want to make sure everything's healthy, especially when you can't be there. Now when I do go to the retreat location, I do top off the water, check the gravity of the cells, and monthly I do equalization. So here's the live view of the charge controller as it sits right now. The battery voltage is 12.76 volts. Of course the charge states night because we have no sunlight. Uh, battery temperature, it's starting to get chilly out there. My batteries are located outside. I have a remote temperature sensor on the battery that tells the charge controller the battery temperature. So the battery is at 7 degrees Celsius, and the heat sink on the charge controller that's inside the house is at 17 degrees Celsius. You can also look at a historical log of how your charge controller is performing if you have a Morningstar charge controller. And again, this is important to me because I can't get to the retreat location every weekend. So a couple times a week I'll log into the charge controller and I can see how each day went when the sun comes out. So let's say today we didn't really get much sunlight out there so we didn't get any absorption, any float or equalization. Uh, on Saturday we hit 120 minutes of absorption and that's what it's programmed for and then 70 minutes of float. But we did get the batteries up to a max voltage of 15.34 volts. Now that's a little higher because the batteries were cold last night got down to 4 degrees Celsius almost freezing so the charge controller with their remote temperature sense automatically compensates for the reduced efficiency in the batteries because of the lower temperature so this is my charge controller this is another system I have out there that I can remotely monitor and then the last thing I like to use out there is remote desktop 
And I said earlier I have an old computer in the shed that runs full time that's connected to the internet. So I use remote desktop to control that computer. And I'll go ahead and open remote desktop here and actually log into that computer. And what I'm doing with this computer is controlling a relay board that controls the security lights outside. So I can remotely log in and turn my lights on and off using that old computer. Now there's a software program here that I have to use to do that. This is a four relay USB board. I'll go ahead and open up a session. And we'll go ahead and minimize this. Now if we go back to Internet Explorer and I pull up my outside cameras, the light will be off because I just opened up that control of that relay board. So there's camera one. Can't really see anything out at the shed. So I'll come over here to Internet Explorer. Let's see if I can minimize this so you can see it happen real time. Pull this off to the side and I'm going to go ahead and turn that relay on. And there's the light turns on on the shed. So I can remotely turn that light on and off with remote desktop and create the perception that somebody's there on the property because I can turn different lights on and off. You could do this with timers, but I like using a remote desktop. And I can also do some other things with it as well. It's a really neat capability, and I enjoy hobbling different technologies together to do different things. So anyway, this is just a short video to show you some of the devices and technology that I'm using to monitor my retreat location in an effort to enhance security, protect my investment, and monitor my systems out there to make sure that they're operating at peak performance when I do go out there and to make sure I'm not having any problems with my systems. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with a brief video to introduce the concept of retreat automation. Thanks for watching, guys.